Advisory Board member Stephen Rogers. Now, Stephen, Michael Cohen has denied these claims. His lawyer, Lanny Davis, has denied these claims. But those people both have a history of being dishonest, to say the least. So who do we believe in this situation regarding the reporting and the people who are subjects of that reporting? Well, to begin with, it sounds like the so-called new evidence is no evidence. In all my years in law enforcement, I have never seen an individual like Robert Mueller go on an extended fishing expedition. There has been absolutely no dots connected between the president of the United States or then candidate Trump and Russia. That's number one. Number two, who do you believe? I wouldn't believe any of them. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that investigation is out of control. And think about this. If all Robert Mueller has is Michael Cohen to depend on to try to connect the dots, that tells me that that investigation is in serious trouble because the credibility of Michael Cohen is zero. He has lied consistently. He has changed his stories. I wouldn't believe any of them. And Robert Mueller, he's been very tight with the information that's coming out of his team. We have seen barely any information unless it's been a court filing or anything like that. But when it comes to the media, they're much more lax with what information they're willing to put out. As I said, we saw this story back in April. We're seeing it again with little to maybe even no additional details. So what kind of effect does this type of reporting have on the American people? Are they getting exhausted of these end of the world type developments? Well, you bring up a good point. I, I remember when I worked at the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force, we would be working on different issues that would affect our country, both domestically and with regard to foreign policy. We look up at the wall and there would be the media out there uh, drawing conclusions based on what? On innuendo, on suggestions, on comments, without any sources corroborating the information they received. But you hit the nail on the head. The American people are onto them. They're getting worn out and drawn out over these ridiculous conclusions that are based on absolutely no evidence. This is why Mueller's investigation has to come to an end. It started nowhere, and it's going to end up nowhere. So in the case of Cohen here, he's denying the claims adamantly, says this never happened. And the same kind of goes for Manafort as well. He says he's never been the Ecuadorian embassy. And these are both two individuals who are in the middle of court cases. And from what we've seen, these court cases are somewhat developed by the narrative in the media. So do these individuals, whether it be Cohen or Manafort, have any plan of recourse for these false stories as of right now that are being put out against them? Probably none at all. I mean, they're in the public now and they're subject to a lot of criticism and uh, a, a lot of debate and discussion. But the truth of the matter will come out when they're under oath. You know, you perjure yourself, you're going to jail. So when they're under oath again, they're going to have to tell the truth. And where that falls, well, we'll find out when they're in a courtroom. Yeah, it's certainly hard to prove malice against these two individuals coming from these networks who are trying to put out accurate information. But I also want to ask this, too. So Cohen and Manafort now, they're both cooperating with the special counsel, at least to some degree, trying to get lighter sentences for jail time. Does this type of reporting have any type of negative consequence, whether it be a Mueller possibly reopening these types of investigations into Cohen or any, say, this Ecuadorian embassy thing ended up having some merit to it? Can Robert Mueller follow through? through on those claims and essentially reopen the investigation that he originally closed? Well, at this point, he could go in any direction he wants. But keep in mind that, look, I've interviewed people who wanted to cooperate with me when I've arrested them and we're bringing them to justice. And sometimes they'll lie to you. They'll actually lie to you, fabricate stories just to get out of the jam that they're in. So it's very, very important that the American people watch very carefully where this is going. And as I said earlier, it's not going very far. It's going nowhere. There's been no evidence, no evidence of collusion. And Robert Mueller's mission was to what? Connect dots between the Trump organization, which would be the president or his campaign, and Russia. But his mission has become, at least in my view, to bring down the president of the United States at all costs. And he can't do it because the president has done nothing wrong. And a lot of critics of this investigation would say that these individuals are no longer singing to prosecutors, but they're essentially composing. They may be making up things that aren't necessarily there. Now, of course, there's no evidence to prove that right now, as most of the indictments have been sealed and redacted for extensive amounts of time. But it kind of poses the question, is their cooperation moving forward? Is the American people getting numb to this whole idea? So, for example, when they hear this bombshell that is expected to come out, that Democrats will say will come out as soon as February, is the American people going to be numb to this idea since the special counsel investigation is essentially sidetracked into different investigations? Well, they're numb already. They're numb. They're fed up. 
They're focused on what? They're focused on the accomplishments of the president that the mainstream media is not talking about. The economy strong. Businesses are coming back to the country. The military strong. We're respected worldwide now. These are things we don't see, but these are the things that really, truly count in the hearts of the American people. They're concerned about their quality of life. They're concerned about their taxes. They're concerned about making a decent living. And those things President Trump has delivered on, and it's those things, not Mueller, that they're focused on. So we started off this segment. You said that we shouldn't believe any individuals in this situation, whether it be Cohen, Manafort, the, uh, the reports being put out, whether, whatever it may be. So let me ask you, Cohen has been cooperating with the special counsel already. He's, uh, you could argue that he's gotten a lenient sentence because of his cooperation. But according to this report, he may have still been lying. So just to kind of either debunk or clarify what happened in that report, does Cohen even have any incentive to continue lying to Robert Mueller? Well, you know, his incentive may be, yes, uh, to do everything he could to make sure that uh, any future uh, ties to anything or any wrongdoing would be uh, dismissed. Uh, look, they all have motives. Mueller's motive, Mueller's in a jam. Mueller has spent two years finding nothing on the president. Cohen, Manafort, they're in a jam. They're facing prison sentences. These people now are going to do anything they could in order to put Donald Trump, our president, in a box and make sure that they're not in the same box. It just isn't going to work because there's nothing there. If there was something the president did wrong, believe me, we would have discovered it already and it would have been dealt with. The president's done nothing wrong. And we've heard reports that Mueller may be releasing his report as early as February of 2019. Of course, the key word there being as early as, so it could be as far as 2020 or beyond as far as we know. Stephen Rogers, thank you for joining us here tonight. We'll be sure to check you in as this investigation inevitably develops as we move forward. Everyone else at home, don't go anywhere. Next, we're going to talk about the government shutdown and President Trump threatening to close the entire southern border if Democrats don't fund the border wall. Hit me up on Twitter at Alex Salvi News over the break, and we'll see you on the other side in just one minute.